listening to Living with ADHD and CPTSD, available on Apple and wherever you get your podcasts. everybody and welcome to another episode of living with ADHD and CPTSD. I have a special guest with me today. Her name is Jo and she is from the United Kingdom or UK and she does a, a vlog, uh, sorry, a vlog show on YouTube or, or Facebook, I believe. Yeah, YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, and it's called ADH Defined, and she's just starting. She released her first video in February, and I have her on this today's show to get not only a female or a woman's perspective on having ADHD, but as a bit of a bonus, someone living in another country altogether across the ocean living with ADHD and having their own experiences and what they go through on a daily basis. So welcome, Joe. Thank you for joining my show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be here. Bit nervous, yeah. but we'll we'll yeah. get through it. <laughs> exactly. I know. I'm always nervous when I do these. I've done a few now and it doesn't change. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so when did you first learn that or realize that you had ADHD? Okay, so yeah, it, it was in the middle of 2020. So this was like peak COVID, peak pandemic. Yeah. Um, and I was on Twitter and I saw a tweet from a friend of mine and she was saying like at the start of the year, she was diagnosed with ADHD and I looked at it and no, this, this is a, a woman in her 30s. And I was just, I was just reading it. It's like, oh, what? ADHD? Like an adult with an AD, with ADHD? Like I've never, you know, I didn't know that was a thing. So I was you know, really curious about it. I looked up the symptoms and I, it was just that light bulb moment. You know, you, you look yeah. at it, it's like, yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I relate to that as well. Um, yeah. And I, I saw, I voiced my concerns to, like, to my boyfriend and he basically, you know, he, I'm sure you've had it as well. Just like, no, no, that's not ADHD. No, no, that can't yeah, be ADHD. Sure. You, you, no, you don't have ADHD, not at all. Um, so I kind of just put it on the back burner a bit. So I, it was still at the back of my mind. I was just like, okay, I'll, I can't deal with this right now. I'll deal with it another day. Um, so yeah, about a year later, I looked into it, looked into it again and yeah. finally did something about it. Got in touch with the person who wrote the tweet and she gave me a load of advice. She was really supportive. Um, yeah, it kind of it was just from there, really. I found some really good content creators on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, and I just related to all of it. And I was just like, okay, I have to do something about this now. Like, right. there's, there's a reason I relate to all of this stuff. I just, I really need to do something about it. I need to get some answers. Um, but I also, I also learned that over in the U, that here in the UK, there isn't great access to mental health services as it goes and yeah yeah it's it's not that great over here due to I mean I'm not I don't really want to get I won't get too much into it but a lot of government cuts and all this that and the other and there's a lot of stigma I think over here with mental health and yeah. everything to do with it over here as well um and as, I think especially with things like ADHD there's a lot of stigma it's very misunderstood because whenever I would bring up, oh yeah, I think I've got ADHD to someone, they just look at me like, what? No, you, you, you don't have ADHD. They don't know. There's no way. Um, but yeah, I, I eventually did call the GP, call my doctor, um, and the services that they wanted. So we we have the NHS here, the National Health Service here, and they wanted to refer me to the NHS service, and it had an eighteen month waiting list oh, no. and you can imagine <laughs> you can imagine you know for, for someone with ADHD I was just thinking like no absolutely not I'm not 
there's no way because you know we can't wait we're not very patient people are we sure <laughs> sure I'm, I'm not right, sure if you're, yeah. you're not sure if you're the same um but yeah just like, <laughs> yeah wow no, there's, yeah there's no way I can wait 18 months just to find out if there's something you know um but I found out about a company here called Psychiatry UK okay. uh which are a private company but we're able to but you're able to go through the NHS and get a diagnosis on the NHS basically so I did that I managed to get managed to go through the whole referral process through there that was long and weeks and weeks of waiting because you know services are pretty yeah yeah I know it's 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 either free or expensive it's just how long do you have to wait yeah yeah that's the thing yeah if if you want to go private here it's ridiculously expensive or if you do want to go down the the free route it's just like months and months I mean I've seen stories from people who've had up to seven years waiting list for ADHD. It could be up to anything up to seven years. Um, so it, yeah, it's it's really really difficult. Um, and it's I think it's just no wonder really why people don't get diagnosed as well. So like because they don't want to go through that, and it's understandable. I think. Yeah, so, I, yeah. I agree. Like just myself, like I went, I my second attempt because my first doctor was kind of not the greatest doctor, but the one that I'm seeing now, I, in late December, I, I asked and he got a referral and it, it's, it was five months, like April in the middle of April is when I'm actually getting the assessment and Mm. it's a five months. It was roughly about five months since the time when he actually submitted it. And he even said, when I told him, he said, wow, usually it takes six months to get the, like to get the call. So I was kind of quite happy that it, it took, a, it was five months. And I know, like you said, it's, if I could easily go the private route mm-hmm. and, and get assessed right away, but it's like, it's at least, I think it was like minimum 2000 just to get a done, wow. like the assessment. And yeah. yeah. And some people of course can afford that. Like I know not every, there's a lot of people who, who will go to the waiting list, but he told me that it's typically, it was typically four to six months before you get your assessment here. Mm-hmm. Now that's just where I am. I know that in other locations in Canada, like in Ontario, for example, that's, they have their own sort of limits because it's all mm-hmm. provincial it's it's not like a, a national service yeah so every every province is its own way and i was even though i haven't been officially assessed and diagnosed i was still able to get the medication like i was able to oh, actually okay. take it but that's only because i have a like a family doctor okay. so yeah another person that i actually interviewed a couple of weeks ago in Ontario, he wasn't, he has no ability to get the medication unless he gets, uh, he, once he gets the official paperwork, he can then go and get some, but un, unless he has a, pre, a, like a family doctor, there's no way he can get any without, uh, you know, the, the official paper saying, here I am, I'm diagnosed, mm-hmm. I've got ADHD. Yeah. So it varies. And yeah, it's, it's pricey just to get the diagnosis and that's in my opinion is, is a lot of the issue is the fact that you either pay or you have to wait a very long time to get something like some mm-hmm. sort of diagnosis yeah and even if you go there's no guarantee that the that the person who's assessing you is necessarily going to going to say yeah you have adhd because I've read, I don't know if you've seen it, but I've seen a lot of, a lot of stories from people who were told that because they did well in school, mm-hmm. they don't have ADHD, but yet they yeah. have all these other symptoms that are pretty yeah. obvious. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's, it's not cut and dry, really. It's, it's a very difficult process just to get diagnosed for ADHD. Yeah. So, and like, imagine trying to get multiple like different like you know I don't know if if you've been told or if they suggested that maybe you've got another like symptom or or like another kind of disability on top of it like a side one or or as they call it a comorbidity like 
uh, did they say anything? When I had my assessment, the psychiatrist I saw said, yeah, you've got anxiety as well. But obviously I, I knew I've, I've suffered from anxiety, I think, for a, a number of years now. So that was no surprise. But before my assessment with Psychiatry UK for ADHD, I actually yeah. went to my doctor as well saying that I thought that I had dyspraxia as well because I related to a lot right. of those symptoms. So, you know, yeah. all about co- you know, coordination and again, concentration and focus. And you think, you, sort of, you think back to your childhood as well and then stuff starts to make sense, doesn't it? When you, yeah. when you look at the symptoms and then stuff starts to add up. So I went, I went to the doctor about that and they said, oh, where are you going for your ADHD assessment? And because I think they thought, well, maybe I could get looked at for dyspraxia as well. Um, but I don't think AD, I don't think Psychiatry UK offer that kind of service. So the doctor was like, "Well, you're looking at you know a two month, two two year, even two year waiting list. I think just to oh. be told something that you think you might already have that or that you know you have anyway." Because she said, "Oh yeah, it sounds to me like you could have it, but do you really want to go down two years of waiting just to be told?" Oh, oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, so it, it's difficult, isn't it? It's it's very difficult yeah. just to get the verification because that's all we want i think a lot of lot of people seem to think that we, we're doing this for a label or we're mm-hmm. doing this just to i don't know i think i think the reason we want to go down that route of a diagnosis is just to get that verification and just to be told okay yeah you're okay you know there's you know you're not yeah. going crazy you're not you know you don't you're not making this up basically i think is what we're what we want to be told so i think that's yeah. that's why we do it isn't it so absolutely yeah like mm-hmm. i even even though i'm pretty certain and my girlfriend is certain that i i do have adhd there's just too mm-hmm. many symptoms that are there mm-hmm. there's still that kind of second guessing where you're going like i'm going yeah. do i really have it or is it something yeah. similar or that that cuz you if you read online and there's a lot of articles that say that there are certain disabilities and certain mm-hmm. mental illnesses that are like similar, or they have a lot yeah. of, of the same symptoms. And you start to, you start to wonder every time you have, you have something occur, you start to kind of sit there and you go, is, is this really ADHD or is mm-hmm. there something else going on? And so you kind of, you don't really have an answer mm-hmm. and at least getting that diagnosis, it, it does give you a sense of relief. Yeah. And now you know what to do next. Like you, you, you have mm. somewhere to go with this instead of just kind of wondering and, yeah. and especially with considering how many people get out, go and try to get assessed. And then they find out that it isn't necessarily this or that, or that the person, the psychiatrist doesn't, doesn't think that's the case. So now you're kind of back at the beginning again. Mm-hmm. And it creates even more like doubt or, or second yeah. guessing. Yeah, absolutely. And whilst I was waiting for my assessment, I, I was going through that and looking back, it it was imposter syndrome because I was right. like, it I was, you know, I was looking at everything to do with ADHD. I was like, yeah, that's it, hundred percent. My boyfriend would say to me, like, Joe, you've you've got ADHD. We know you've got ADHD. ADHD, ADHD, that's new. ADHD. Um <laughs> that's a new one isn't it um <laughs> yeah but there would there would always be a voice telling me no it's it can't be ADHD like it just it just isn't it can't be um yeah. and then you, that's when you start to doubt yourself and absolutely yeah and and everything else um but yeah it is just the it's so tricky because you're just having an eternal battle with yourself you're trying to get you know, trying to get this verification, but then you've also got, no, it's not that. No, it's not that. And that is just the imposter syndrome, isn't it? And it's, yeah, it's, it's tough. Yeah. And, and it's the thing with ADHD is there's, as I'm sure you know, all too well, is there's so much going on in your mind. It doesn't take much for that, that voice to, to be second guessing or to be doubting and to be putting that, that, thought into your mind of do I really have it, it you know I don't know like it, it, yeah you, and then you kind of obsess about it you go around in a circle yeah. and 
And meanwhile, if there's, you're having a symptom or you're doing something that's pretty obvious, you know, like it, it yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it, I wish it wasn't so difficult for, so for, for people to find out, to get assessments, yeah. to get the, yeah. the correct medication, to get the right help. You know, it, like I, the, the, the gentleman I talked to with I interviewed two weeks ago, we both agreed that the government does not do enough to help yeah. people. Like it's better than what it used to be, but it's mm-hmm. still not even close to where it should be yeah. because there's going to be a lot more people in the next uh, even five, 10 years that are going to are c- going to come to realize that there's something going on that they have ADHD or they have Absolutely. autism mm-hmm. or they've got trauma related issues and they they're going to need the help. And the fact that it, I don't know how much it costs to see a therapist in, in UK or where you mm-hmm. live, mm-hmm. but here a single appointment to see one is 200 and we have some benefit packages from employment cover our appointments, but we don't get a lot. Like it's only yeah. like mine only covers seven appointments. Yeah. And there's some people out there that don't even get half of that, like, mm-hmm. or don't even get it at all. So, you know, you're trying to live on, on a, on a wage, you're trying to make your money and, and live and, and, and pay rent and, and buy food, especially today, the way things are going. And on yeah. top of it, you're trying to get mental assistance from a therapist or get assessed or something. And, and it's impossible to, for some to pay for it. So they never really get the help. Yeah. Yeah. If- yeah. I think as well, like you said, um, more and more people are going to find out, you know, these things about themselves. And I think that that is yeah. down to, the information and the knowledge is here now and you know I'm, yeah. I'm only 20 I'm only 26 you know this information and stuff that we have now wasn't here 20 years ago exactly. so I think that that's why a lot of people my age and even like people you know uh, I've read stories about women and uh in the, in the in the 30s 40s 50s who are getting diagnosed as well because the information that we have now just yeah. wasn't there at the time or wasn't there absolutely many years ago so yeah I think I think now that there's there's definitely more awareness I feel there's definitely more there's more information there's more knowledge so hopefully with that there'll be more access to mental health services ADHD services and autism as well and everything else so I think yeah hopefully that's the direction things are going (laughs) in hopefully yeah (laughs) I yeah no kidding I hope so too I know Mm -hmm. that See, I'm I'm 44, uh-huh. so I've got I was a I was I was growing up in the very early 80s, and my parents they had neither of them had any idea what ADHD was, or you know like that this there's any kind of a thing that could affect a, a kid's behavior, mm-hmm. and from their generation, it was just like it was kind of like an automatic stereotype or a stigma that it was yeah. that the, to the, this child's just being disruptive or just needs proper discipline, blah, blah, blah. And they had no idea that there was even this possibility that their kid could have ADHD or mm-hmm. maybe even he's an autistic, right? Like mm-hmm. there's this, and so they didn't know they, had, there was never any, it, in any of my year early years ever uh, like even brought up like the, you know like it was all discipline and and work harder and and focusing and, and which obviously is is a real problem yeah. with ADHD yeah. but <laughs> it was never there was nothing there and and even and I know that it was very very early in the in the whole idea of ADHD back then so today the children out there who are in school and are having education, you know, issues with learning and issues with focusing and behavior, at least now, hopefully there'll be that ability to say, okay, my, my child obviously is having some issues with, with Mm -hmm. um, behaving and with learning and struggling in school. We should 
have them check, you know, see what's going on, take them to a specialist or take them to the doctor and ask about it. Do they, does he have ADHD? You know, mm-hmm. at least now it's more the idea of it or that the knowledge that, that it's there, that it's a pop, yeah. that it is something that is, yeah. is well known. It, you know, maybe in 20 years, it, it'll be something that every kid has, you know, gets tested for, or maybe they'll, yeah. you know, it'll be part of, uh, it'll just be normal. And then those parents, it, it will be known to everybody. It won't be one of yeah. these things where, oh, I never knew about ADHD. It'll just yeah. be, yeah, let's, let's see if maybe my child has that. Maybe there's something going on. Like, yeah, I want, I want people to just have it as if it's like going and buying milk or going and buying bread or going to get gas like you know yeah that was actually something I I went over in my in my latest video I you know I said if it was up to me I'd have every child from a young age you know assessed for ADHD and autism dyslexia dyspraxia so then we you know that they can be caught early and then they can get the support Mm -hmm. that they need growing up and they're not struggling throughout school or through careers and everything else and they don't know why they're struggling and they don't know that there's a reason they don't fit in or there's a reason they can't function like everybody else and they don't know why so it's good to know you know sort of the reason behind it and sort of manage it better but instead of just you know going in without going into life without knowing yes yeah yeah exactly like I, it's, it's kind of, it's humorous in a way when I think back to my school days and, and I'm, cause I'm not just thinking about myself. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at other people that I went to school with and I'm thinking there's a, a probably a, a number of good percentage of these, ch- of these kids that I went to school with that have that had or, or sorry have ADHD or maybe were autistic or maybe had yeah. dyslexia or mm-hmm. maybe they grew up with parents that were not the greatest parents you know like mm-hmm. there's things that are that are that were probably going on that back then nobody really had any idea or never was really brought up and today it's just it's still it's there it's but it's not as it's not as as open and is not as uh well known as it should be yeah no nah, definitely absolutely yeah hopefully things bad. are changing like, though yeah yeah i think things are changing i think that there's like i say like there's more awareness more knowledge lots more information and i think things are going to change soon hopefully absolutely <laughs> yeah exactly it, mm-hmm. there's going to be a time i hate to say it but covid has to some yes. degree yeah. exposed this right yeah absolutely. because mm-hmm. yeah like even my employee my employee was was smart enough to go okay this this is a tough time for a lot of people let's give them more coverage for psychiatric for psychology you know for mental health cut support yeah yeah and and it was like awesome that's fantastic but at the same time i'm going that's not well for for the average person okay that's that's good but for what about those type that actually need a, a consistent visit or you need to need help all mm. that time right mm-hmm. it's still not quite enough but it's definitely a step in the right in the right yeah. Uh, yeah. direction here yeah we're we're definitely getting there i i, think I do so. think it's gonna take it's probably gonna take somebody being elected who maybe has some or has one of these and yeah. struggled with it in their life and and brings it up and says look we need to there's going to be more people in this world that are going to have these disabilities these struggles Mm-hmm. We need to do something. And it will, it may be that one country that starts it and says, okay, we're, we're going to make me- mental health support part of our healthcare, or we're going to make it available to anybody who needs it. And then other people are going to go, wow, you know, that's impressive. And then there's going to be more people pushing for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the dream. That's the dream. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can't have and, and when and they think about it, if if you actually look at it from an economic point of view, 
the more people who are struggling with this, with mental illness, whether it's depression or anxiety or, or a disability like an ADHD or, or an autism, and they're struggling at work and it's affecting a company's mm-hmm. ability to be, if, to make money and to be uh, profitable, it's going to start showing up in more and more, com- more places. And then it's, I hate to have it have to be that kind of a way to make it occur, yeah. right? Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. tough. I know it, it is tough and it, you know, I, I don't think of it as a, I, I, it's, it's unfortunate that I have it, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I, I don't want us to fall back on it and, oh, and yeah. use it yeah. as an excuse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was, I was thinking about this recently you know, in, in regards to the channel that I've started up and it's like, I don't want to be, someone with it you know it's still very new I'm still learning about it yeah it can be you know there's bad days associated with ADHD there could be very bad yeah. days and bad times and everything else um but I was like I don't want to be someone who just falls back on it feels sorry for myself yeah. I want to laugh at it I want to find the funny in it and I want to find mm-hmm. the positive in it and just find you know the the weird and quirky ways that sort of make me tick and sort of learn to work with it and learn to just learn to manage them better and just live with it a bit better I don't want to be someone who just goes oh I've got ADHD and I can't do this I can't do that I just I want to go I've got ADHD what can I do with this what can I do with that you know what's what can I do differently and like I said I just want to laugh at it sometimes I have some days where I just go what was that you know I do something yeah I don't know what what top of my head, you know, you know, I I start something and then I am doing something completely different by the end of it. And I just have to go, wait, okay, wait a second. (laughs) What happened there? You know, yeah, there's a series of events that happen and it's just, I go, I, you know, I start, I start off somewhere and then doing something completely different by the end of it. And some days I just have to laugh at it because that's all, you know, that's all you can do sometimes, I think. Absolutely. And that's, that's actually a real positive point of, of way to look at it. Because yeah. you can either you can either have a symptom or something that happens in your day where you just you're just kind of going, what <laughs> the heck? Mm. And you can either get frustrated and angry about it and let it ruin the rest of your day or cause yeah. it to go downhill. Or yeah. you can just say, oh, well, you know, OK, yeah, whatever. Okay. And, and, you know, move on like. Yeah, you're. That's that's that is the best way to look at it. And yeah. like you said, finding ways to to deal with it or to to like they always they always say look for instead of falling back on it and saying oh I'm always going to forget I'm never going to it's this isn't going to work. You you find ways to adapt your surroundings or your daily habits or mm-hmm. or create a routine that is more advantageous to you so that when you and you are going to work or you are going out to to whatever you're doing or you're or you're doing something around the house Mm -hmm. it it helps you to remember to do something or you have a visual reminder saying hey you're this is where this is or this is what you have to do tomorrow or just you know you have to you have to adapt you have to challenge yourself to make this ADHD as minimal of a, of a distraction or as a problem as possible while still owning up to it and saying, yes, I have ADHD, but I'm not, I'm not using it as an excuse for, for what I don't do Mm -hmm. in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And something that I was actually thinking about the other day is, do you think that we see if I can word this right? Um, (laughs) you know, do all of these things to help that well, we think it might be helping our ADHD, but are we actually helping the people who don't have ADHD feel comfortable? Does that make sense? Sort of feel comfortable yeah. around us, you know, like Absolutely. it's like, you know, our, our weird and, you know, our weird ways that we can manage in ourselves may not, you know, they might not make sense to people who don't have ADHD. So I feel like a lot of the time we want to cover that up for people 
who might be uncomfortable with it. Yeah, that's where the whole that masking. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, 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 the masking. Yeah. Yeah, people people mask their if if they're really insecure or they're really self conscious of of it because maybe there's a group of people that they they're afraid of losing or they're you know mm. or they're going to think of them differently. They they mask their behaviors because they learn how to to in, imitate right instead of. Yes being themselves they they know how to pretend or to imitate that person or the, or their mm -hmm. surroundings so that they appear normal because if they are doing this adaptation you know like every time they order something they write it down or every time they're like there's they're always on their phone and they're always entering information or they're all they got a notepad and they're writing stuff down all the time there there are going to be people who are kind of going what are you doing right like yeah. but they may be curious and hopefully they're not going that's kind of silly you know or they mm -hmm. or they suddenly go hmm that person's kind of weird or 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 that's that's not a normal person mm. it's true but at the same time you have to that's this is where the taking the ownership of of, of this is saying okay i have adhd if my partner or my girlfriend or my boyfriend thinks that this is going to be a problem. Well, are, you know, mm -hmm. like, are you going to, are you going to sacrifice the way you want to live to be successful and to be able to live your life as, mm -hmm. as best that you can, or are you going to change or are you just going to give in and because your partner isn't, doesn't seem to be happy with it or, or thinks that it, it's causing a problem. Like if, yeah, if, if your partner is, is supportive and happy to, to, to help you or to realize that you're, you're doing these things, these adaptations to make your life happier and better and mm -hmm. less frustrating, then that's what you want. It shouldn't matter yeah. what other people are going to think. Like there's yes. obviously going to be people who will, look at you and kind of go this person's unusual or odd and then they're going to have this perception about you well you don't need them unless unless that's it's your mother or your father or, or your <laughs> boss but you know like yeah you don't you don't have to to give to anybody uh you know it, and it should be almost the opposite they should be being more like happy free that you're be you're mm -hmm. doing whatever you need to do to make yeah. your life uh good and happy and and successful all right let's take a break and then we come back we will continue this episode mm -hmm. yes yeah i think if it works for you it works and i think that's that's all that matters if you've yeah. found something that works for you then doesn't matter what i think anybody else thinks exactly and i think that's what a lot of i think that holds back a lot of people who have something happening whether it is maybe there is a, a, a depression thing or maybe they do suffer from adhd or dyslexia or or traumatic events that are affecting their daily life they they're so afraid of what other people are going to think, whether yeah. it's their friends or their family or a loved one or their job, even that they, they, they just want to keep it to themselves or pretend that it's not there. Yeah. And if it's severe, it's obviously really going to cause problems. Mm -hmm. And eventually it's either going to, it's going to bite them in the ass <laughs> <laughs> or it's, or they'll get lucky or, or they'll just be alone for the rest of their lives or, or isolate yeah. because they're so ashamed of their, of their disability. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's sad that that happens, but it, it's, I understand why for a lot of people, because there's so mm. many people out there that, that they see this different behavior or they see someone struggling and their first thought is, that's such an odd behavior. What's wrong with that person rather than 
lending a hand out or supporting them or, or saying, I see there's something, something going on. Do you want to talk or, or is, are you okay? It, it's always the, the negative perception that yeah. is the first thing to come for a lot of people. So yeah. it doesn't surprise Definitely. me that people are afraid to. Yeah. I think over here, I think in the UK in particular, you know, I think, I think we're quite known for having a bit of a stiff, stiff upper lip. We don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't like to talk about our feelings much as Brits. We don't like to do it. We don't, if someone asks us how we are, we just go, yeah, I'm okay. Even if we're not, even if we're not having a good day, if we're, you know, if things are bad, if we're not, if we're feeling sad or depressed, we will always go, oh yeah, I'm all right. How are you? We never, we never like to talk about how we're feeling. And we always think we don't want to make the other person uncomfortable. We don't want to put this on someone else we don't want to get deep into our feelings because that's going to open up a lot of other things that we might that we might not be ready to talk about yet and that, that's, that exactly. just seems to be a an unwritten agreement over here I feel as if you know when, when we're having a conversation with someone we, we yeah. it takes a lot I think for for us to open up I, from what I found um yeah, yeah I think <laughs> If if we say how if or if we say something, we probably mean the opposite. <laughs> I mm-hmm. think that, I think that's us as, as a as a country, as a as a culture. I think a lot a lot of the times we we mean the opposite when we say something. Right? Horribly. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> it's it's very confusing, but you sort of sort of have to learn to adapt to the weird quirky ways that we that we have. <laughs> I know my girlfriend and I watch the the TV drama Downton Abbey. Oh and yeah! And so yeah. we see a lot of the behavior in, especially in the men, uh, and they're <laughs> always like they don't want to show any emotion, but yeah. they do it behind the, the the doors. Yeah. But they really cover it up awful fast, and even some of the women yeah. are kind of not. They don't really want to show it. <laughs> yeah. No, so. that that's honestly it's very accurate. I, I'll have to say that for. For everything Downton Abbey portrays that that's I think that's very accurate for over here. Yeah, we yeah, we just don't want to make a big fuss. I think that's that's the bottom line. We don't like making a fuss, we don't like making a big deal out of things. And I think that has gone over to the mental health side. And I don't think I don't think that's you know a very a very good thing, really. I think we it takes a lot, I, I think, to for us to learn to talk about ourselves and what's bothering us and I think we still, I think it's, there's a long way to go over here, I think, in particular, with our attitude towards mental health and, you know, neurodiversities and all of that. So I think, yeah, a long way to go. Yeah, I think it might, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it might take a generation or two oh, yeah. where yeah. the parents are the ones that are telling their kids, don't be afraid to say something. You know, if if you're if you're scared of something, or if you're Mm -hmm. Mm. you don't speak up, don't worry. Like it's okay, and maybe you know, hopefully that generation will instill that into their kids. You know, it it might take some time for the idea of being able to to be open about what's going on in your mind and not be afraid to express that a fear or that emotion or that Mm -hmm. that you know the pain that you're you're feeling. And not worry that people are going to go, that's silly. Don't, you know, that's, there's nothing going on. Like, don't worry mm-hmm. about it. Like it's, it's going to take some, some effort. And yeah, I hope it does because mm-hmm. that's, that's the only way it's, you're ever going to get true progress is by people yeah. being open to the idea that this is just part of life. That's, yeah. you know, don't hide it because yeah. you're going to suffer and it's going to affect your life. It's going to affect your partner's life. It's, it, it will likely affect your children's life. Cause if you can't, if you can't be there in full capacity, because you're, you've got something happening, you've got ADHD or, or you're an autistic person or you're, or you're suffering from trauma and it's, it's getting in a way of being a parent to the point that your child is going, I'm not getting the, the, the care that I need, mm-hmm. then something is wrong there. And it needs to be yeah. taken a lot more seriously and be open about it. Yeah. 
No, definitely. I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is. I don't, I, I know here it is more like in Canada and more so than the U S but still there is a lot of discussion. Like, I, I don't know what, if there is any sort of like day or special event that occurs in the UK for mental health, but in Canada, once a year, there's, we have a, a cell phone company that okay. does like a, a mental health day. And for every, every te- a Twitter or every text message that gets sent out and you attach the hashtag for their, for that day, they donate money to oh, for wow. the Canadian mental health support. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. and they've been doing it. I think, think it's 10 years i can't i don't know the exact oh, wow. length but they every year they do it in in february and it it's quite popular although <laughs> the last year they we had a lot of this is when covid was really going mm-hmm. cr- crazy and so they had their mental health day and then the very next day they they uh fired a whole bunch of people <laughs> <laughs> so there was a lot of this like oh my god they're they're taking people's money and donating and yet they're firing people because they can't afford to to pay them and then they're giving their managers bonuses so on top of it all so mm-hmm. but yeah it, it i wish i wish more countries i don't i don't know if other like European countries do that like if Germany or France or Spain i don't know if they have anything like this but we yeah it it's they need to have more exposure and there needs to be more public awareness and support and pressure at the same time on the government to help yeah yes definitely it's funny you should say that actually i actually had let me I'll find it i had a comment on my most recent yeah. video let me find it i found it very interesting um, cool. Yeah, so at this th- in this video, I was talking about how I was diagnosed on so my diagnosis journey, and someone commented right. saying, "An eighteen-month wait is crazy." I walked into a hospital and got seen thirty minutes later. Medical care is different here in Taiwan. No referral needed. Just told the front of house admin that I wanted to see a doctor regarding ADHD, and all I was asked was if I wanted to see a male or female doctor. I just got diagnosed at thirty-four. Holy, yeah, that's impressive. That's, I mean, that's unheard of over here. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I, I can't imagine being able to walk into a mental, like a, oh, almost said mental hospital. Um, excuse me, a, a a hospital for for that kind of thing, and just saying, yeah, I I think I I want to get diagnosed for or assessed for ADHD, and they mm. go, sure, right down here, and. And an yeah, hour later, yeah. you've got paperwork. Uh, yeah, yeah take, would... take a number sort of thing. Yeah, that would yeah be... exactly. <laughs> that would 300 people in a line. Yeah. yeah. And they also that's, said... That's impressive. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, they also said, also, because of how the medical system works here, it cost me a whopping £15. So I'm not sure how much that is in Canadian dollars but for 20... the consultation. That's about 27, 28 bucks. Okay. Um, yeah was asked why I never saw a doctor about it where I used to live and said, oh, and when I said it was way too expensive to do, so I just made it work, the look I was given was priceless. So. Um, <laughs> that's impressive. I, I wish that could be uh, more places, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's amazing. <laughs> I just, I was just, oh, wow. I couldn't even like write a, a proper reply. I was just like, what have I just read? I don't know what I've just read that. I didn't know that was a thing anywhere, but yeah. it is. It just hasn't caught on to us yet. So. Yeah. Well, I, I know there are some places like uh, Netherlands and Norway where they, their focus on personal well-being is a lot more mm. like important than some places. Yeah. Yeah, and it makes me wonder if if there's something similar could be possible there, where you could walk in and, or maybe it's a couple of weeks, you know, and you and you get in and they get and you get diagnosed and it's taken care of, and mm-hmm. and it's not you don't have to spend a couple grand just to do it. 
you know, like it, they're they're like ahead of us in in certain ways mm-hmm. when it comes to like personal well being and personal health. So if I think about it, I don't think it would surprise me if if that was the case over there, if it yeah. was more accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's that's good. I'm I'm glad that that person was able to get mm-hmm. assessed just like that. That would mm-hmm. have been awesome. Wow. So what what would you say is the one symptom like that of your ADHD that really affects you more than any? Oh, well, this was actually what the psychiatrist was happy to diagnose me just sort of alone with, and it was emotional dysregulation. So. Ah. Yeah, we we talked a lot about how I react and how I respond to things because it doesn't take a lot to ruin my day. Basically, I right. can I can go from naught to a hundred, you know, in, in a matter of seconds. You know, our, our yeah. thoughts can just they just race, don't they? And we can yeah. jump from one thing to the other, and we can get very upset just with ourselves and just with our thoughts. And I've always struggled with that, even from a young age I would find myself reacting to things that other people would and other other people wouldn't react the same and I would always wonder why aren't you angry about this why am I so upset why am I so sensitive about all of these things and no one else seems to be and I would have to sort of dig those emotions you know proper dig those emotions down and try not to react and stuff and mask and all of that um but I've, I've always been very sensitive and very quick to react and I would I would I would often get called you know a a stress head at school so someone who gets stressed very easily um laughed at for how I would react to things sometimes which would confuse me more sometimes like why are you laughing at me why aren't you reacting the same way I'm reacting and yeah stuff like that and it's still something that I struggle with today if I you know I, I get um also RSD as well rejection oh, sensitivity yes. yeah. I really really struggle with that that that's a big one that is a massive one for me um yeah, yeah I'd say it's, it's more along the emotional sensitivity side that I feel I really really struggle with but I I do I do struggle with concentration and focus and find myself just thinking about other things when I'm trying to do something or trying to work and right yeah yeah what, what about yourself yeah. what do you struggle with the most uh, um i have a tendency to forget mm. a lot mm-hmm. like i i will be on i'll be doing something and it kind of falls into like multitasking and f- can yeah. be a complete failure <laughs> yeah and i'll and I'll be, I'll be doing, like, I'll just be outside, for example, with the intention of clearing the snow from the entire property, like mm-hmm. front and the back and, and then the driveway for the, for the, at the, at the garage. And I'll get out there and my, my brain, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to get, I got to get that done because that's where all the cars are always parking and then do this and this. And then I'll, I'll, do the back like the 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 backyard and then i'll go into the front and i'll shovel that and that takes 20 minutes and then Mm -hmm. i'm and within that time frame the idea of doing the driveway is completely gone i have no i have no recollection or no i or not able to remember that there's that part still to do and i and i go into the back and i put everything away and get in the house and go and relax and then all of a sudden it's not even me that goes, oh, damn it. I forgot to do that one part. It's it's my girlfriend that goes, you didn't shovel the back driver. And I'm going, oh, because mm. in my brain, I remember saying, all right, I'm going to, I got, I'm going to do that. Cause I was looking at it, going to do it. And then all of a sudden it's just gone. And it, yeah. and it, it's a very common thing. Cause, and the thing is, is you get distracted. Like I get distracted easily from, yeah something I'm doing like I'll I'm I'm very fortunate I haven't burned the house down but you know like because that there's always that potential which which because you you you're doing one thing and you get pulled away and you could literally be standing there and something you see something that looks interesting and you're working on it 
And then 20 mm -hmm. minutes goes by and all of a sudden the pot is over boiling because you completely forgot that you're working on that at the, to begin with. Yeah. And it's, and it's a very common problem. And yeah, you know, you have, that's what the whole point of like setting a reminder or setting a timer or something to help you jarred that memory because you know and i always struggled with with that and even remembering to make these little notes or to make the little reminders or that or the mm -hmm. or the the timer to 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 say hey don't forget about that <laughs> you know because yeah. you're going to. yeah yeah that's that's yeah. the that's the worst one out of, out of every symptom because i it even in the past long before i knew i had it i always would I'd be going to try to get out the door to go to work. And I think I would be going back and forth from my room to the door at least five times mm, because yeah. I would forget the keys or I'd forget my wallet or, <laughs> or then I'd forget my phone. And then, and I would even sometimes I'd be driving for 10 minutes and then I would look, I'd be like, Oh no, my key card. I don't have my key card. I can't get into the building. So I had to turn around yeah. and yeah. And you get, it got to the point where I had I had no choice. I had to make it so that there wasn't five trips back and forth, yeah. right? And mm. it it was it was either that or face the the possibility of being cons consistently forgetting something, and then being late or struggling. You know, you can't do your life because you're always forgetting to make sure you have everything with you. Mm -hmm. You got to, you have to either yeah. decide, yes, okay, I'm doing this and this is enough is enough or, you know, one or the other. If you... Yeah. Yeah. Do you find as well where, you know, you can't forget something and you're just like, okay, I'm going out. I need to remember this. I've got to remember this. And then you're at the house, you're way away from the house and then you go, oh, I forgot it. Like I do that quite a lot. That's just, like, I make, I make it, a, you know, a point to remember the thing that I must not forget and yeah. then I just end up forgetting it and yeah. that that's yeah that, that happens quite a lot I feel like I, the, the more pressure I put on not to forget something I'll the more I'll forget it I think exactly yeah. and I'm not sure why that is you know mm. like I, I don't know exactly why that why that happens like I know I have there have been times where I'm literally like in my brain going okay don't forget the <laughs> the food item I, you know I can't even yeah. think of it in the moment but don't forget it don't forget it don't forget it and then I, I think I say it like 10 times and then you're driving and something kind of catches your eye and you're just <laughs> and before you know it it's gone yeah and and the the funny thing is is it's it's like oblivious you have no idea and yeah. you get to the store and you do all your shopping and you might go oh right and go get it or you you go and you drive away and then all of a sudden you're going you're getting close to home like something catch you know kicks in and you go oh no <laughs> the one thing i went to go get and yeah. i didn't <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. uh, it, and that's the frustrating part because you you don't want you, it's not like you're doing this on purpose you're not no. intentionally mm -hmm. forgetting something and mm -hmm. And that's and that's what I find to be so frustrating is that I'm not doing these things to hurt somebody. I'm not doing these mm. things to to make someone get angry, and I'm not doing it to make myself frustrated. It just happens. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, and I think a lot of people don't quite understand because if you're if they're neurotypical and they have zero experience and they have no idea they see you forget something repeatedly and their first thought is he's stupid or he's just mm. he's lazy or he doesn't think or he's just daydreaming you know yeah they don't they don't realize no it, it makes me laugh sometimes because these like these these are the people who say oh yeah we all forget our keys though sometimes like, i've heard that phrase so you know so yeah. many times where they say oh no we all forget our keys we're all a little bit adhd but they're also the people who say ADHD isn't a real thing. It's so overdiagnosed. We're all a little bit ADHD. And it's just like, well, pick one. Wh which one is it? Is everyone a little bit ADHD or 
is it a real thing like make up your mind like which one is it yeah yeah, yeah it's really I, I frustrating. totally agree yeah. i know i was months the, what this is when i was first in in getting to i that i was being told that i had this and i was mm -hmm. starting the medication this is about a year ago and i was into the i drive a lot so i was into yeah. the audio books Mm -hmm. And I was listening to all these different ADHD audiobooks. And there was this one person who was his his tone and his behavior towards it was skeptical. He yeah. he was he he knows that ADHD is a thing, but all he could talk about was is that there's so much focus on medicating and, and diagnosing and giving them a prescription. And he's he seems to talk as if all there's all these other things that you could do and all these different ways of, of helping yourself but it almost makes me think he's never taken the medication like he like he has no experience because mm -hmm. i know I, I have plenty of personal first-hand experience with it that taking the medication does change the way you're functioning like it, it does help it's just you can't i think what he was trying to get at is you can't rely on it but he sounded a lot more like he thinks that it's just not it's truly not necessary when in yeah. the reality is it is because yeah there's only so many things you can do like you can you can change your diet you can do more exercise you can meditate you can have adaptations but the medication is going to help. It yeah. will help you focus mm -hmm. more. It will help you feel like for me, it, it gave me more confidence. It, it made me feel less hesitation when it came to thinking about and doing something and deciding it, 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 it helped. Yeah. So it, it's definitely something that, that should be as part of it, but it, it can't be the only thing because you're not going to like, there's all these little things that they can do to help to make the ADHD less of a, less of a problem, I guess, especially when you're, when you're in a stressful situation, you know, like yeah. we all deal with stress and stress makes our ADHD symptoms way worse. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anybody who has ADHD out there knows I'm sure yeah. what we're talking about. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I've read. I'm not on medication myself yet, so yeah. I'm. I'm still waiting to see what what's happening with that. I'm not sure where that's up to, um, yeah. but I, I've seen so many people say like, I take like I see or neurotypicals take this sort of medication just to sort of help them focus on their work. Yeah. I need it just to feel like a normal human being. Yeah. And I think that's college the difference, students. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. There's a yeah, exactly. Like, there's yeah. a big thing with college students. They they take Ritalin or Adderall. Yeah. yeah. And it, and it makes yeah. them have more energy and super focused. So they're abusing. They're they're making false like diagnosis, or they're stealing it, or they're, or they're you know yeah. they. And so they're taking this stuff, and it's causing them to do be way more aware and way more focused. But it has side effects that that they're not aware, of, and it's addictive. Like it can yes. be addictive yeah. if you're taking it way too much. So, yeah, there definitely is a problem with that. But they have said that taking it taking it at the right amount, there's no you can't get addicted to it if you're taking it at the correct amount. Okay. It's when they're going and taking three times the amount or mm -hmm. like. Because these these students aren't just taking one pill in the morning, they're they're going and opening it up and taking two, three at one time, and all of a sudden their brains are just going crazy. That's when it's addictive because the brain wants that dopamine hit, and it yeah. just it's yeah. it's just like honestly, it's a lot like any other drug. It's like like illegal drug or street drug out there. Your brain does eventually get used to it. Mm -hmm. if and then so you're just you have to increase it and go and especially mm -hmm. if you're taking it at such a high dosage yeah. it's going to really become addictive but if you're taking it at, at the proper amount that is 
and that's why they don't just say, here you go, here's six months of drugs and, and, and enjoy. It's in a lot of places, it's you take it for one month and you have to go back and have them assess you and ask you questions before you get your next 30 days. And that's very common for most places because they don't want people just abusing it. They want it. They yeah. want to be responsible. Yeah. So, yeah, it's important. Yes, definitely. I think, again, being in the UK, um, so our, our government pays for medication, you know, through the NHS. So yeah, it's being paid for by the government. And I always saw, I don't know, I sort of have a bit of a theory that they don't want people to go through, you know, these mental health services and to be put on medication, whether it's to do with mental health, because it, they don't want to pay for it. They don't, you know, the government don't want to pay for it. And I know it might be a bit of a conspiracy, but I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'd, 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 I'm not sure about that, but I think I think medication and oh yeah, you know, being on medication for anything to do with your mental health, I think is, I think getting a bit muddled here, but yeah. does seem to be just some online stigma. Okay, we're going to take a break here, and then when we come back, we'll finish this episode with Joe from Twitter on women with ADHD. I don't know if it's the same thing it's, in Canada or yeah. Yeah, there is. There definitely is. There, there's this, there's this stigma that they're overdiagnosing that the, that the, yes. yeah. the pharmacies and, and the and the drug companies are just wanting to make money. So yeah. they're saying, here, have this, do this, yes, give them that. Like that's what they're that's their their idea. And everybody thinks a lot of these doctors out there and these some of these psychiatrists and some of these media. Uh, people out there are going, oh, they're just, they're, they're over diagnosing because the pharmacies want to make money. But the reality is, is it's not as simple as just going, Hey, I got ADHD. Give me, I want pills. They're not just going to hand you a, a prescription without mm -hmm. going through the questions. Like I, I went and I, I said, yeah, I'm, I, I'm pretty certain I have ADHD. I need to get assessed. Um, I'd like to restart on my medication. He didn't just go, okay, and write the referral and say, here you go. He asked me like eight questions mm -hmm. and, and he's asking me, so what's, you know, how does this, how have you been feeling? Do you feel any d anxiety or have you been depressed at all? Or, you know, and, and it was like a lot of questions and I answered them, of course, honestly, because I, I do want this to get, to get taken care of. And his, I didn't get the medication the first time, which mm -hmm. was surprising. But at the same time, I was kind of going, well, that's actually, that's good. Because he didn't just mm. go, oh, yeah, sure, no problem. Here you go. Like, he's handing them out like it's like a flyer. But, yeah, he, he was very careful. And he, he was being very, well, like a doctor should. He was making, asking the questions before he decided. And mm -hmm. then once I did the survey... Like I, I did a survey that was asking me a bunch of questions and, and how, how often does this happen? How, how often do you feel this? And I answered them all and handed them over and he said, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get your assessment done. And then he said, here, I'll give you 30 days of this. Let's come back in a month and we'll see how you're doing. It's very structured and he's being very careful. He's not just handing it out like it's yeah like for anyone, which yeah. is fantastic. And that. But nobody sees that. They only see what, you know, they they think is some conspiracy or some some plan for the pharmacies to make millions of dollars because they want to sell their drugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not like that. It, no, because no. if it really was, if if it truly was, it you would see it. It you know it it would there'd be an epidemic or there'd be a problem out there. Like I'm not, I don't hear any stories of, of, of an Adderall outbreak or a Ritalin <laughs> issue, you know, it's, no. it, it's not like that because they're being no. very careful. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so 
now that you're you've been diagnosed mm-hmm. and you've you finally realize and you you know it's official obviously so what what's your next step like i know you're trying to get the medication what are you, what are your your goals in in your life today now that you have this what are you looking to do or what's your what's your plan to change or to maybe make your life better i think i want to learn how to unmask i think that's that's a big one because you know i've realized throughout my entire life i've been masking my entire life and knowing that i'm not being my true authentic self as well um so i think i want i want to learn to just learn how to be myself and know that i'm going to be myself and it's going to be okay i don't have to care what other people think you know but also the rejection sensitivity comes into play with that and i have to have to learn how to manage that because you know there's the fear of being yourself and then being rejected and you know all all of that as well so i think learning how to unmask and just being myself around people and just you know being fair to myself really i think that's that's really? the main i think that's the main thing that i want to learn and learn how to manage and also i want to make others aware of it i think definitely yeah. you know, through through this channel because i wanted a creative outlet for it yeah, I yeah. was. I could tell, you know, the people I was talking to about ADHD because all I wanted to talk about was ADHD. Is all I wanted to talk about to my boyfriend or to friends or to family members. Like, okay, they're getting bored of this. I can tell. So I need to find. I need to find another way to do this. So that's yeah. that's where the channel came from, and I can talk about that. I could just talk in front of a camera, but I just I want to learn to just be myself and exactly not yeah. be not be afraid to do that. One hundred percent. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. yeah, I know. I I have a similar situation here. <laughs> I I'm at the point where my girlfriend says, "I'm not your therapist. I don't want to talk to you about your issues or or your what you're going through," and I can't just drop into my my therapist mm-hmm. any at any day and say, "Hey, let's talk about this. I I've got a problem." Yeah. Uh, there's there is an outlet there's a way on twitter and there i know there are some forums out there but twitter is a more immediate yes Yes. interaction and the fact that you can go on there and you can say out loud to to, and anybody can hear you or see it and go another person with adhd they sound like they they want to talk or they know what they're talking about or they have something valuable to add or and before you know it you've got people that are that that are telling you something that is is going to be new or, or you're mm-hmm. going to learn from it or or you're doing the opposite or you're telling that you're showing them something that that they didn't know or, or yeah. it gives them a sense of motivation or a sense of yes of yeah. like okay somebody actually cares and somebody is feels the way I feel. So it gives them that sense of hope or that sense of this isn't, this isn't going to be a struggle on my own. You know, like there are, there are ways of, of doing it. You don't have to be face to face with somebody in order to necessarily Mm. get the help you need. Like other, everybody's opinions and everybody's experiences and their day to day on how they live with this, and how they chain, you know, what they've had to do in order to be six, to be happy or to, to be able to live and be responsible or to, to do what they have to do in order to, to pay their bills. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it all helps. It all makes them feel that this isn't going to be as hard as they thought. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's good to know that you're just, you're not alone when I, you know, I, yeah. you know, I look on Twitter and, I'm getting a lot more um, ADHD content on Twitter now. And I'm just looking at yeah. other stuff, just like, yeah, that's me as well. Like, wow, I'm not the only person who thinks that way or who does yeah. that thing. And it's just been really, really just comforting and just really validating as well to, you know, Absolutely. know that, you know, you're not alone and you're not the only person who who does that sort of yeah. thing. So it's been, it's been really nice yeah. to read and really nice to see. I know. 
It's it's great. Uh, I get a I get a thrill out of what I do because <laughs> they like I'm not looking for self like for for people to like think of me as 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 something big. I I'm just I want to help them. I want them yes. to know that I deal with this. And I and I yeah. and I have to make a choice. I I can either stay in bed and do nothing and just be afraid or or do the, the do the minimal because if I do the minimal there's very little chance that my ADHD or whatever is going to cause issues or yeah. make someone upset or you frustrate yourself. I can stay in bed or I can get up and I can I can be strong and I can go sure I might forget something. I might walk out of the house and go off oh, I forgot this and whatever and go back in but it's it's just it's a, in, in the big picture it's not all that big because mm -hmm. you can it's up to you but you can do it as long as you're you know you feel that there's support there's some there's people that that are going through the same thing and yes. Every time someone goes or says something like saying, that's what an amazing episode. I learned something about what I'm doing or it gave me motivation or it was great to, to listen to another person's point of view. You, I, I feel great about myself because I know that I'm learning something. I'm, and what I've learned is effective and it also helps that person figure out that it's it isn't so bad mm -hmm. you know it yeah yeah adhd can be very frustrating like you said at the beginning it can be at the point where you have a really bad day mm -hmm. but it you can also learn that life can still be fun and it can still be enjoyable it's not it's not the end of the world that you've yeah. got adhd yeah something that i like to sometimes apply to my day is just lower the bar as well yeah so sometimes you know I like to get out for a walk and get 10,000 steps every day but sometimes nice. I just have to go if I'm not you know feeling up to it I just have to go okay 10 minutes outside is better than nothing mm -hmm. or I don't know just eating you know some junk food is better than not eating at all I sometimes just have to remind myself of stuff like that. Just like you're, you're doing fine. Like just lower the bar yeah. today. You'll, we'll get through it. Tomorrow will be a better day. Sometimes I just have to Absolutely. tell myself that. And sometimes I have to give myself non-negotiables as well. So I like to do a workout most days. I like to go for a run. I like to go out for a walk and just say, okay, this walk is non-negotiable. We are going for a walk because you're not going to regret a walk. You're not going to regret going outside and getting fresh air. It's going to make you feel better. So I have to sometimes, I have to apply my, I have to apply that to myself and to my day. It's hard. Like it's hard to get the motivation to do it sometimes, but I know I'm going to make myself feel better afterwards, but it's, it's a struggle, but yeah. Yeah. And I, I, oh yeah. I know <laughs> it, can, it can definitely be a struggle. There are days where you just, yeah you're just not sure what you're going to do or how yeah. you're going to get to the next yeah. stage. Yeah. I know. I, 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 I know from my own experiences getting out on a walk uh, and pushing myself, the, the amount of ability, like the in, improvement that I've had when it comes to thinking and focus yes. is, in, yes. is so much better. And I look at that and I go, that's awesome. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it makes yeah. me want to go back out. Like I, I, yeah. I know that it's going to help, yeah. you know, yeah. like who, who would not want to go and first off, take care of themselves, exercise, which is obviously important and, and makes you feel healthier, but it also makes your brain function better. Like yeah. who would not want to do that? And unless yeah. they can't, or it's 30 below, which we did have a few of those days, but it, yeah, you feel the motivation because you know what it what what the good is, it, how good it is for you. It's yeah. it's a, it's huge, especially when you notice it. Like it's so obvious. But I think as well, having ADHD, I think we 
forget that feeling as well and what it does to us and how good it makes us feel. So that's why I think we find yeah. it hard. <laughs> we find it hard to do those things as well, like exercising yeah. and going for a walk and because we forget the feeling it gives us and then we get reminded of it when we do it. And then we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's why I do that. But it's a constant cycle, isn't it? Just rinse and repeat. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There are days where I don't want to go out, but yes. Yeah. Like you say, it's it's non-negotiable. I I have to get out, and when I do, it's that ten minutes in. It's like, yeah, I'm glad I went out. This is good. I feel yeah. good. I'm I'm happier. I'm, I'm yeah. feeling in a great mood now. And, and I'm like, why did I, why was I not wanting to go out? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's, I always, I, I love going in the gym and I love exercising, but mm -hmm. the motivation to try and exercise and try and just try and do it, I find is the hardest exercise itself. Just finding right. the motivation to just go and do it. I feel like I can't yeah. just get up and just go and do it. I have to have a constant like internal battle, just like go and do it, just go and do it, just go and do it now. But my body isn't moving. And that's, that's, you know, the struggle. That's what makes it difficult, you know. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I totally get that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one last question. What, of, I know that obviously there's all these things that occur every day and for a lot of ADHD people and they have to find ways to adapt or to help remember or help to do, mm -hmm. to, you know, to stay on task. What's, what is the one thing that you do on a daily basis to help yourself knowing that you have ADHD so that you're able to, you're able to complete something or you're able to, to finish it or to do it or to, you know, like what's that adaption that you have Hmm. Okay. I'm quite uh, a night owl. So I like to stay up late and also get up late as well. And I've actually found that getting up late affects my entire day. I actually have a worse day because of it. So my boyfriend likes to say to me, you're a different person when you're up early. So mm -hmm. I find it very hard to get up early, but I know I'm going to have a better day if I get up early, get an exercise in early or get a workout in early, because as I'm on medicated as well, the only thing that really helps me focus is, I think, exercise and getting out for walking and running and stuff like that. So I'd say trying to, yeah, just really trying to apply stuff like that to my day helps me and helps yeah. me do other things as well. So me, Yeah, like a good start. Yeah, a good start to yeah. the day because it, it helps me get a bit of writing done or it helps me get a video done or it helps me get anything else done. I have a much better day, I think, for it as well. Absolutely. I, yeah. yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's there's a faint, there's those TV commercials for cereal, uh, you know, like the breakfast, yeah. you know, yeah. have a great start, have a, have a yeah. bowl of whatever i can't i can't yeah. think of what it's called but they always do that where the the first thing in the morning they're having a great big bowl of of nuts or oats or or something and then they're showing them having an amazing day what a yeah. what a great start <laughs> they're not lying yeah. it turns out but as you know mm -hmm. i i've always struggled to get out of bed um i always struggle I, I struggle to go to sleep and i struggle to get out of bed and it it just infects it it affects my entire day if i have a late start and I don't have a good yeah. start to the day. So I'm really trying to, you know, apply that to my life more now. Get up early, get stuff done early. Then you've got more hours in the day to do everything else. Yeah, uh, no kidding. Yeah. It's like me. I I start at eight in the morning to work, mm. but I get up an hour before. And mm. I spend that time, I instead of spending it like, I used to get up a half hour before work and I barely really had any time to relax because it was make the coffee, get your breakfast done, get set up, work. And now it's, I, I get up and I make a coffee and I sit and I, and I watch videos or I do some reading yes. or something yeah. and I just kind of relax and let, let myself wake up and get into the day and feel calm. 
because mm-hmm. if I don't, this like this it feels like a nonstop stress. Yes. From the very start. And yes. it affects That's the it. day because yeah, by my midday or two thirds of the day, I'm just feeling like I could just say enough. I, I don't want to do anymore. Or, or I'm dead off, tired. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You sort of just write off your day if you have a start, yeah. if you have a start like that. Yeah. 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 That's and that's so yeah, exactly. Having a really good start to the day is is a is big because mm. the stress, because with, with us obviously stress and anxiety and and just the the fact that we can go from zero to hundred just like that. Mm-hmm. If we can, if we can avoid as much as possible having that sudden stress, where we're just like, oh my god, I, I have to get this done, I got to get that done, I got to move, I got to go. It's the times going by, and you, you just don't ever feel like you you're enjoying that morning, or you're being, you know, you're taking your time, and you're feeling mm-hmm. feeling like this is a good day, and mm-hmm. actually being able to reflect on it is so big. Yeah. It's such a key, and it makes such a difference. Yes. Yeah. It's hard though, but <laughs> oh, yeah. We we feel yeah. better for it, but it's hard to do, it really. Is. <laughs> yeah, nothing is ever easy when it comes to improvement. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, isn't that the truth? Mm. It makes me wonder what other people do when when they get mm. up or when, you know, how yeah. how they start to to make it so that they're not already halfway to to blowing out blowing up from there <laughs> and it's not even 9 a.m yeah yep. all right well that's i guess that's it for then uh or for now excuse me um this was a lot of fun and i definitely got a real good insight as to how you experience life with adhd and yeah. it's honestly i'm i am surprised at just how tough it is to get a diagnosis unless you're you've got money <laughs> you know it's yeah oh yeah you're oh you're just sort of lucky and you have the right doctor yeah. who listens to you and they're willing to take you seriously I like, all oh, yeah sort of falls into that as well and yeah, l- yeah luck sort of unfortunately plays a part in it so yeah I know it's, it is a luck of a draw, unfortunately for some people, Mm, mm -hmm. if you don't have the right doctor, it's very difficult. Yes. Yes. And if, yeah. And then you end up looking around and trying to find one. And and if you are lucky enough and you've got a good doctor, it can be the diff, all the difference. Mm -hmm. It it just goes to show you how healthcare is really, you know, it needs work. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, and and coming from you know a woman with ADHD as well, um, we're we're constantly asking ourselves like before we go to the doctor just for anything really like, are they going to believe us? Are they going to take us seriously? Yeah. Because unfortunately, a lot of doctors don't take women seriously, and very that's, true. That's, yes. Yeah, that's why, and, and and they don't and they don't believe women as well. And yeah, another reason I hear why, it firsthand. Yeah. yeah. My, yeah. my girlfriend has her own things that she's going through. And she tells yeah. me, she's, she told me many times how she, she goes and says something about what she's dealing with. And, and they're like, the doctor just doesn't, yeah. mm-hmm. they either they're lying or they're, or they're just, or they're exaggerating or they're, they don't believe them period. And then you go home and you're going, well, what was the point of that? Yeah. And it makes us just not want to even bother going to the doctors and that's yeah. why we don't get the help we need and yeah so it's sad I really mm. i know i think they say that it's very difficult unless someone speaks up and says something it's it's next to impossible to tell if someone has any mental issues like mental health issues because yes. you yeah. can't see it it's only there if if they show it or if they are willing to talk about it yeah yeah uh, definitely it's too bad okay well thank you for coming on to my show it was thank great you. Yeah. yeah thank you for um, having okay. me <laughs> absolutely I, I am so glad that I had you on it was a great different perspective that I was looking forward to hearing and yeah, I actually good. learned quite a bit you know oh good that's good yeah yeah <laughs> 
Okay, everybody. Um, she, Joe is on Twitter. If you are listening and you are on there, um, you can definitely find her there. Um, I guess you just have to look under the ADHD hashtag and there You'll are a few others. Yeah. yeah and then, <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the link to her show will be in my description of this show as well. So you can check that out and, and see what she's done so far as far as for her videos. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay, everybody. That's it for this episode. Um, join me next week for another ADHD episode on living with ADHD and CPTSD. All right, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.